So I have about 100 miles of my new 23 Expert. So I'm gonna go through a kind of a pre-season first check. So I'm gonna start by checking belt deflection. I can already tell by looking at it, it's a little loose. Won't really affect much, but with the proper belt deflection, we'll have lower belt temps and more throttle response. So we'll go ahead and make an adjustment. I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick adjustment. It's a T25 Torx to loosen the bolt on the adjuster. The bolt doesn't have to come all the way out, we'll just loosen it. And we're gonna use a tool that's in the access panel of the oil door. It also doubles as a, as a suspension tool, but this is machined aluminum, can cut you, so I like to use a tool. And the threads are reverse on the jack shaft, so that's something to consider. Move it to the right, as you spin it, the secondary will close again. The good rule of thumb is the bottom of the cog is equal with the top of the sheave, that's pretty close. And that belt's pretty tight now. Doesn't take much, because they're new. Just took a little bit of a set. Just trying to grab the belt a little bit, probably back off just a touch. That's about right there. While I'm right here, I'll show you the pivot bolt real quick. I ride typically from 8,000 to 10,000 feet, and these sleds are set up for slightly lower elevation than that. So per the high altitude spec sheet, there's these two little washers that you can pull off the pivot bolt. It's really simple. I've already done it on this one, but I'll show you anyway. You can run the pivot bolt all the way out. Nothing's gonna fall off or drop in the clutch. The only thing you have to worry about is the pivot bolt. The pivot bolt comes out, and yours will be silver if you have a 23 expert. And you just pull them off and run the clicker in position three. That's where this clutch is designed to run. And it doesn't have a number on three, it just has a dash, but if you just look in between one and two, or sorry, two and four, that is position three. And only make a clicker adjustment if it's absolutely necessary, if you're on the mountain. And if you had to do it on the mountain, there it is. If you had to do it on the mountain, your belt tool has a T25 Torx on the end of it, and you could make a, a clicker adjustment. But try to run it in three. Have your dealer look up the spec sheet and put the clutching in for your altitude. If you're running above 10,000, there's a completely different setup, but it's all available at your dealer. And as we're tightening up, we'll make sure the clicker stays in position three. No big deal. We're tight, ready to roll. And while I have it up in the air, I like to check the ski bolts and the shock bolts. The skis are a 15 and a 16. Nice and tight. Okay, good. And the shock bolts are a 12 and a 13. Get this one to the side. Now I'm going to check chain tension. Pull the exhaust side panel off. I'll show you a close-up of the adjuster. This is also a T25. You can use your belt tool. It has that T25 on the end of it. 
I'm really diligent about checking chain tension. Uh, first 50 miles you need to check it, 300 miles you need to check it, and anytime I have this side panel off I just grab a T25. It doesn't take a lot of torque to make sure it's tight, you just want it snug. If it's too tight it'll wear out the chain tensioner faster than normal, and if it's too loose that could lead to catastrophic failure. Like I said, I've been pretty diligent, not seeing any more movement, but I'm going to check it in a couple hundred miles. Now I'm going to check the track tension. And I can tell by looking at it, it's a little loose. Spec in the service manual is about an inch and a quarter. It's been like that for a long time. If I take a tape measure, press down about 15 pounds of pressure, it's about two inches. So it's not alarming. Um, they will take quite a bit of stretch. So this is something that I'll watch pretty diligently for the next few hundred miles. Start by loosening the axle. Need two 15 millimeter wrenches. And the adjuster itself is a 10 millimeter. And if you're making a big adjustment or if you've had the rear axle out, the track needs to be aligned. But when I'm just tightening a track for the first couple times, I just go an equal distance and I just do it by counting turns. Start there, six turns. Now we can check it. It's a little loose still, but we'll have a look. Looks good to me. Another quick note on track tension, I make the adjustment while I'm in the agile position because that's where I'm going to ride it most of the time and that's where the track is going to be the tightest. There's one more thing I'm going to show you, so we're going to pull the side panel off, a little access panel off. The Gen 5 has air intakes for the CVT compartment and it moves more air than the engine. So we need to service the little screens in here because the belt dust will plug them off. Already removed a lot of the straps. It's this little guy here, and as you can see, it's pretty dirty. And that's because the new belt is breaking in. So as the, the belt breaks in, this will get less and less, but it's something to keep an eye on. That's a lot of air moving through there, and we don't want to restrict it. Take a little bit of compressed air, you don't have to blow very hard. And you can see it really cleaning up, it might be tough to see on the screen. And as the belt breaks in, this will get less and less, but keep an eye on it. We want to keep air moving through there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more tips.